Hey culturalists, I'm QB for Culture's Theory and today we are ranking Coco, Lily, and Taj, three friends from Brooklyn and Bronx, New York, who made it big as Sisters with Voices, better known as SWV. We're focusing on their five projects as a group, no Christmas albums or solo projects. You may think you know where this one is going, but stick with us. Remember to give us a thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe and share if you love it. Now let's get to it. Number five, Still. If you've been watching our channel for a while, it's probably no surprise to you that their most recent offering is at the bottom of the list. And if you heard this record, you know why. It's not horrible is just not great. And knowing that these ladies can do contemporary as demonstrated on their 2012 release, this one, four years removed, just doesn't keep up. On the majority of the 10 tracks here, it feels like they're trying to be cool. And it's not cool when you're trying. Singles, Ain't No Man, MCE, Man Crush Every Day, and On Tonight are okay. And they use a sample from Amy Winehouse's Rehab on their track Love Song. But the best song here is When Love Didn't Hurt, where Lily leads both. But the best song here is When Love Didn't Hurt, where Lily's lead vocals and the lyrics match the music and the time. Derek Big D, Baker, and Kanan Lamb were the primary writers and producers on this project, so we don't know whether to blame them or the one week turnaround for the shortcomings of this album. The record isn't a complete skip, but it's close. Number four, New Beginning. We won't call this a sophomore slump because there are some joints on here, but we will call it a sophomore slide because some of these tracks will put you to sleep. Let's start there. On Snooze Tracks, Fine Time, Love Is So Amazing, and You Are My Love. On Snooze Tracks, Fine Time, Love Is So Amazing, and You Are My Love run way counter to the marketing narrative that SWV came out with. That is to say, they could sing, but have some edge. You know, like a rougher in vogue. There is some new Jill swing here, but it doesn't pack the punch that it did on the debut. Coco Taj and Lily do more writing, with one or more of them contributing to six of the 17 tracks. They also share more of the lead singing responsibilities, most notably Taj on It's All About You. Lead single, You're the One, is a gem too. But the real highlight of this album is that it's the debut of the producing duo that had been bubbling around the industry and got their first record on Billboard by way of the Sisters with Voices. Use Your Heart, the album's second single, which peaked at 22 on the Hot 100 and number six on the R&B chart, was written by Pharrell Williams and Chad Hugo and produced by the Neptunes. Number three, release some tension. This record came right on the hill of New Beginning with barely enough breathing room to finish the promo for the former before recording began on this one. Release Some Tension is the most feature heavy of the project with assists from fellow East Coasters, P. Diddy, Foxy Brown, Lil' Kim, Lil' C's, and Redman, some legends from the West, Snoop and E-40, and VA representatives Missy and Timbaland. The producer list is even longer than that. This all made for an updated sound that got back to the group's hip hop roots. Singles, Someone, which samples Big's Ten Crack Commandments, Lose My Cool, and Can We, which also appeared on the Booty Call soundtrack are each heavily influenced by their collaborators, Diddy, Red Men and Missy Elliott, respectively. However, arguably the most enduring track from this feature fest is a song without any help. Rain was the final single released in 98 and can still be heard on your adult urban radio today. And do y'all remember seeing Tyrese in the video? Speaking of 98, after release some Tension's gold status, which was a bit of a fall off from their previous efforts and everything else that can happen between three grown women in a singing group and in life, the trio disbanded. Coco went on to sign with RCA as a solo artist and released Hot Coco in 1999 before they closed whatever they were calling their black music division. She didn't stop singing though and went on to record a couple of gospel albums. Taj and Lily didn't make much noise musically, though Taj did do a couple of reality shows, including appearing on Survivor, but the stars aligned when they reunited in 2011 and later released. Number two, I Missed Us. Before 2011 was up, SWV dropped their first single in more than a decade. Lead single Cosign was the perfect preview to their fourth album, I Missed Us. It was fresh and refreshing. This time, thanks to Kanan Lamb, who brought a new perspective to the crew, they weren't recycling old SWV, but rather re inventing their sound for an audience who may love them, but I listened to a lot of music between their last album and this one. It was updated and mature without sounding forced or stale. Lamb was the primary writer and producer for the first nine tracks. His co-writer for six of them was Torian Osborne. This created cohesion and a strong core sound for the project. The group collaborated with Brian Michael Cox, Kevin Ross, and duo Carbon and Ivan, among others for the remaining four songs here. The ladies alternate on the lead here again, and the harmonies on the choruses are still a vibe. The whole album is a highlight reel. They started with a party on Cosign, All About You, and Show Off, down to the Shaka Khan sampling Do Ya featuring Brianna Perry. They slow it up on the title track and Keep You Home, then finish up with a remake of Pat LaBelle's If Only You Knew. I Missed Us is an example of a reunion album done right. Number one, it's about time. When Teddy Riley discovered three singing sisters from New York, he could only hope that they would become one of the best-selling girl groups of all time. 
and they did. It started with this multi-platinum RCA debut release, It's About Time. Coco Taj and Lily didn't contribute to the writing or production in those days, as it was mainly handled by Brian Alexander Morgan. Their lead single, Right Here, is a lone SWV co-writing credit, with Taj lending her pen to the bridge and delivering on the vocals. We know this was a single on its own, however, what really set this track off was a Human Nature remix, and there are a couple of things to note about this one. One, apparently the ladies weren't feeling Teddy Riley's suggestion at first, and said it was boring. Number two, we mentioned a young Neptunes earlier. Did you know that that was for real on the opening doing the Number three, MJ gave them access to his and Quincy Jones' 1983 hit for free. This sample took the remix to number two on the Billboard Hot 100, and the video is a sleeper classic too. Suffice to say, the ladies didn't have much to do with the musical sausage making, but they did sing their asses off. Check out I'm So Into You, You're Always On My Mind, Anything, and everyone's karaoke favorite, Week, where the women show their R&B bona fides. Week, by the way, was written about Morgan's crush on Shantae Moore, and originally intended to be sung by Charlie Wilson. Imagine that. Downtown gets a lot of attention for being a little raunchy, but it doesn't have anything on Black Pudding where the ladies drop bars like, there is some 90s filler on here like coming home, think you're gonna like it and give it to me, but that's just a sign of the times. SWV's New Jill Swing gives this project its own place in musical history and the number one spot today. The 90s and 2000s were booming with girl groups from SWV, Brownstone in total, to TLC, Escape and Destiny's Child, and many more in between. Do you think we'll ever have it like that again? I mean, even Chloe and Hallie are on different ways right now. Let us know what you think in the comments. By the way, did we nail this list? or did we nail this list? Subscribe to Culture's Theory and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a list. You can check out these videos on the screen. In the meantime, I'm QB. I'll see you next time.